Hello, my name is Mario. Welcome to another Learning Go video. In today's episode, I'm continuing with the series covering relational databases. Specifically, I'm discussing how to do bulk inserts with MySQL. As usual, the link to the code will be in the description of this video, so feel free to check that out. What I have right here is a sort of like a combination of what we did for PGX as well as what I showed you last time with MySQL, the biggest differences between PGX and MySQL when connecting to the database. Specifically, uh, we have uh, just a simple example that we, like I said, mentioned, like I mentioned before, uh, covering connections to MySQL and whatnot. There's a data CSV file, which is literally the same as, uh, as the one that we use for PGX. Now, what I want to show you is basically two ways to insert data from a file into MySQL. There are two functions in the MySQL package. One of them will be register local file and the other one will be register reader handler. Let's look at register local file first. For that one specifically, what we need to do is call the function MySQL register local file. Give it a name, for example, data CSV, which will be the name of the file that we're trying to load. And then we need to use called um, the dv exact function that indicates the, the actual load info uh, load into uh, command that we use for actually loading the data into the database into the database so basically what we're going to i'm going to be doing just copy and paste this paste it in my here as the instruction instead of using a file path i'm going to be using data csv which is the name of the file that i have right here and this is a uh, complaining because this is a new not a new variable and foo will not be foo it will be users now one thing we need to do first obviously is we need to run our docker container you don't have to use real docker you can use a real server if you want to a remote server um, or something something like that you obviously you just need to uh, have a, a the server that you can connect to so i'm just going to wait a little bit until it's available for connection like like it says right here now what we are going to be doing we're going to be creating the uh, table that we need in this case password if you remember it's password because that's the one that i have right here and the database is called db name so we use db name and we use create the table with the instruction that I have right here. And there's nothing. Select start from users. So everything seems to be working. So what comes next is actually to execute the command. The or not to execute the command, run the program. So we run the program and we get oh use a non mode. Okay. There is something wrong. Oh, of course. <laughs> so I forgot to do this. It's different than nil print the lender is a typo right there so we run this again uh, and now we are getting a message that says local uh, loading is disabled and in order to fix this we need to enable a variable a configuration variable on the server side and for that i want to show you first the instruction that we need to execute so you know exactly if you have it enabled or not so it's called show global variables like local in file it's going to give you an, a value of off, which means disable. In order to enable, you need to set a global variable called local infile. And if you run this again, you will see that now it's enabled. Uh, if I run the program one more time, you will see that now it's not failing. And it's just printing now closed. And if we run the select star, you will see that we have the data that we want into our database. But it looks uh, weird. We, we really... <laughs> don't want to save the data the way it is we literally want to define for each one of the columns insert those into their corresponding uh, columns in the table now for doing that what we have here and is missing actually it's a few instructions that are applicable to this what is going on to this uh, load data command that we have now what we need to do is to take or add a few extra uh, details that I that I have right here and those will be related to how the actual data is formatted by MySQL specifically we need to indicate 
uh, how the fields are terminated by, which in this case say, hey, I'm terminated by a comma. Now right here it's not because the, v the way Vim is rendering, but if you do like a head data CSV, you will notice that this is actually raw data. There is a quote, value, quote, comma, and then uh, quote, co value, quote, double quote. So <clears throat> we're telling uh, MySQL that we're going to be, each one of the fields is using a comma as a delimiter, and each one of the fields is enclosed by a double clo quote, and we have two columns. One will be first name, and the other one will be last name. If we run this again, but before, let me delete the users. And uh, this is deleted, nothing else. We do a run. We do again a select from stars, and now we have the data that we want. So everything seems to be working according to what we want to do with loading and doing bulk inserts. Now, the question for this, or not the question, but the, 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 the thing that we need to wonder is next is, hey, can, what, how can we load the data if we want to modify the data before loading it, or maybe you need to sanitize some fields in the data CSV file, maybe you need to augment the data in a different way, and whatnot, and that's where the second function come in, comes in, called MySQL Register Reader Handler. So let's talk about that one in particular. The way this function works is a little bit similar to what we had before. The biggest difference will be that now we're going to be naming it whatever we want to call it. It's just a handler. And if you notice the documentation, we need to pass in a function that returns a reader, I, uh, IO reader. And then we just have, we need to do this before calling exec, actually. We're going to return nil for now, so my editor doesn't complain. So this will be the most basic implementation that we have. It's not doing anything, obviously, but we, we this is the beginning. Now, the other difference will be that we need to indicate, uh, change the in file, the variable, the argument writer, to use reader, and then colon, colon, and the name that we have in here in the handler. So this name is the same as the other one. They must match for this thing to work. So what are we going to be doing in this example? We're going to be modifying one of the columns. So we make it uppercase, and then we're going to be sending that data through the reader in MySQL. How can we do this one? Well, we can use the, we're going to be using the bytes buffer type and the CSV types reader and writer. So first things first, oh, and obviously the iOS file, the iOS, the OS, iOS, what the heck, the OS file. So we need to open our file. So file, all right, open data CSV. Uh, if er is different than nil, return nil. And we're going to be printing out the error OS open error. Now, what we need to do for next is we need to define a CSV reader. So CSV, new reader, and then file. Okay, so we need to read each one of the lines in the CSV. So we do a CSV reader, read, which returns a record and an error. If you notice the documentation, you will see that that's the information, a record and a reader, and a record and an error. So if there is an error, we need to fail, but before doing that, uh, the way reader reading works is that it returns an error, specifically an IOF, IOEOF, or end of file, to indicate there are no thing else to read. And if that's the case, we just break because we just finished reading the file. And next, what we have to do is take the record and, you know, modify it. Uh, in this case, we're going to do a strings upper to upper record zero so everything seems to be working oops one thing that i'm missing actually is obviously if there is an error if error is different than nil because we already checked for for the iof we just need to return nil and thump print ln just for debugging purposes we can do a csv read read error now with this, we are modifying what we are reading from the CSV, but we're not, we are not writing it anywhere or even returning anything in particular. So what we need to do next is actually define a CSV writer, like I told you before. So CSV writer, we're going to create a CSV new writer. And what is going to be receiving this one in particular will be a buffer. So bytes, buffer, 
and buffer will be passed in as the argument for the initializer in the writer and there is a type here writer and actually what we are going to be returning will be the buffer down here that so the buffer implements the io reader and we're just reading from the we're reading from the file and creating a new temporary csv in memory we're writing that to a buffer and we're returning that back now obviously what is missing next will be to actually write to the writer which will be using with the function write so we are writing to the writer what we read from the reader uh, after we modify the value and finally we need to flush it just to make sure everything is safe into our uh, writer one thing i forgot just uh, is we need to close obviously the file so os writer file close uh, miss this function and with this everything seems to be compiling uh, we delete what I had before 50 rows deleted if I run this again you will notice that it it, it worked it didn't throw an error and I do run and uh, I mean select the star and you will see how those values are augmented and hopefully all of this makes sense uh, compared to the PGX driver uh, things are a bit more easier in a sense in the beginning when you're using the re the first uh, function for registering the, the, the loading the file but if you want to do some augmentation things get a little bit more complicated um, and obviously the way it is right now there is no actual way to indicate the error like it's literally we just return nil in this case which could crash the program if, if it's not handled correctly so I mean, it is what it is in, with my sequel. Hopefully, again, like I said, all of this makes sense. Thank you for watching. Stay safe and take care. I will talk to you in the next episode. See you.